click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's video we are going to study about phenols form aldehyde resin. Now what it is, it is a polymer and it is a synthesized polymer. Synthesized polymers are also known as man-made polymers. We make those polymers by doing different kinds of reactions. So in today's session we will be studying the three steps to form the polymer, the properties as well as the uses of it. Phenol formaldehyde resins. These are synthesized by condensation polymerization. Now this is very important students. Condensation polymerization. Condensation is a kind of polymerization. It's a reaction which takes place which helps in making polymers. So what happens in condensation polymerization is the two reactants. But always remember in the polymerization reactions we call the reactants as monomers. So the two monomers come together and they condense. What do we mean by condensing? They club together. They club together by forming some kind of linkage and when they form this linkage they will remove some kind of byproduct. So this is known as condensation polymerization through which this resin is formed. The raw materials are phenol or resorcinone, form aldehyde or furafil. So over here we can either use this combination with this combination or this combination with this combination. The thermoset is prepared as per the following steps. There are three steps. We will study each and every step in detail. The first is preparation of OOP, trimethyloyl phenol resin. Now what do we mean by OOP? It's ortho, ortho and para. There are three positions on the benzene ring, ortho, meta and para. We will study about this later in the reactions. Step 2 is polymerization of O-methyloyl phenol to give Novolac with linear structure. And the third step is heating Novolac to form highly crossed polymer that is Baker. So where my final product will be Bakelite and it will be a very strong solid structure but to get Bakelite we will have to follow three steps. Let us see at the first step. Over here I have phenol and formaldehyde. Now both of these are my reactants also known as monomers. React with each other to give different products depending on the ratio of the reactants as shown below. So over here what I have done, I have shown the reactants over here. The reactants are encircled in a box. These are my reactants. And now by the quantity of the reactants or the proportion of the reactants, I will get different products over here. Now this is 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2 and 1 is to 3. Now let's start with 1 is to 1. What is my reactant number one phenol phenol is nothing but my benzene ring with an OH group on it benzene ring with an OH group is known as phenol and what is form aldehyde form aldehyde is my very first aldehyde CHO group is my aldehydic group and to this CHO group if I add an H I'll get form aldehyde over here so if both of these reactants are taken in the proportion of 1 is to 1 that means both of them are taken equally I will get two product students these two products are nothing but P methyloyl phenol and O methyloyl phenol now what is P methyloyl and O methyloyl benzene ring has three spots those are ortho meta and para ortho is designated by O meta is designated by M and para is designated by P generally the ortho spot and the para spot both of them are extremely stable in most of the cases meta is very unstable and because of that whenever we write products we generally do not have the products in the meta form why because if a product is unstable it will become a reversible reaction it will go back to the reactants over here also we have the same case we have ortho and we have para that are two stable products now let us see the positions of ortho meta para this is my phenol so over here i'll have an oh over here i'll have an oh now besides the oh this is known as ortho after ortho I have meta and finally over here I have para this point is my para in the same way over here also this is known as ortho meta para ortho meta para ortho meta and para these are the three main spots so over here if you see my functional group that is CH2OH it is attached at which place students it's attached at O so if it is attached at O it will be my ortho group and that is the reason why we write it as O methyloyl phenol over here students the CH2OH which is my functional group it is attached at P. P is nothing but para and that's the reason why I write it as P methyloyl phenol. Over here we do not have to write the entire name as ortho we can just designate the symbol for it which is O and in the same way for para also we can designate the symbol for it which is P. So when you have phenol plus formaldehyde in equal proportions that is 1 is to 1 it will form P 
P-methyl oil phenol and O-methyl oil phenol. Now let us see what happens if I change the proportion of it. I am changing the proportion of it as 1 is to 2. Whenever I am changing the proportion of 1 is to 2, that means what the phenol is 1. But my formaldehyde is 2. That means as compared to phenol and formaldehyde, formaldehyde is much more than phenol. It is almost twice than that of phenol. Phenol contains my benzene ring. Students, if the benzene ring is less, will the product have more benzene rings? No. And that is the reason why over here when I had 1 is to 1 proportion, I had 2 benzene rings and I had 2 different products. But over here what happens is I only get 1 benzene ring. Why do I get 1 benzene ring? Because benzene ring or the phenol which contains the benzene ring has the proportion of 1 whereas formaldehyde has the proportion of 2 and it is 1 is to 2. And that's the reason why this formaldehyde will again form CH2OH which is a methyl oil group and because of that group it gets attached over here and it gets attached over here now what happens is this is my ortho this is my para it has to attach at ortho and para respectively it does not attach at meta why because i told you that meta is a very unstable place to be and that is the reason why there are two attachments over here o p dimethyl oil phenol o and p why do i have o and p because i have attachments at both the places i have attachments at ortho i have attachments at para as well so both the places have proper attachments and that's the reason why i write o and p now how many methyl oil groups i have in the benzene i have two methyl oil groups in the benzene which are one and two in chemistry whenever you have two you write it as di so i have written di and then methyl oil phenol now let us see the third case students wherein I have 1 is to 3 proportion. 1 is to 3 is my phenol is 1. In proportion to that amount of phenol I have thrice of that formaldehyde. So this is 1 is to 3. Now what happens when I have 1 is to 3 proportion again the benzene ring is 1 because the phenol which contains the benzene ring is in the proportion of 1. As compared to that the aldehyde the formaldehyde group is thrice of that. And that is the reason why what happens over here, this aldehyde groups attaches itself at three corners. Now these three corners are nothing but O, this is P and this is again O. Why? Because I told you this is ortho, meta, para, ortho, meta, para. Again over here you will see that there are two attachments at O, one attachment at P but none attachments at M. Why do not we have any attachments at M? Because it is extremely unstable. This is known as OOP trimethyl oil phenol why trimethyl oil phenol because always when i have three groups in chemistry it is named as tri again so when i have reactants one is to one i will get two forms over here o methyl oil phenol and p methyl oil phenol when i have one is to two i'll just have one benzene ring with o p dimethyl oil phenol i have one phenol and thrice of formaldehyde i'll get o o p that means one two and three trimethyl oil phenol now I had told you students that this is a condensation polymer and I explained you condensation polymer is nothing but when two monomers club in together or join in together it forms a condensation polymer. So over here I have an example I have phenol plus formaldehyde when I do the reaction what happens over here is this becomes a methyl oil phenol. So when this methyl oil phenol attaches itself to another methyl oil phenol both of them club together form an ether linkage. Now what do I mean by ether linkage? Ether is a functional group in organic chemistry ether stands for r o r where r is my alkyl group in the middle i'll have oxygen and i'll have another alkyl group as another r so over here what am i getting this is this entire thing is my r this is my one r this is my o and this is my another r and this entire structure r o r is nothing but my ether linkage and because of this ether linkage these monomers have turned into polymers here's where my first step ends and starts with the second step what is my second step monomethyl oil phenol that is ortho or para can undergo polymerization to give low molecular weight polymers known as novolac now these kind of structures are known as nothing but my novolac so now I have a reaction over here and what is it? This is phenol with methyl group attached to it. Let's take for example O methyl oil phenol. At ortho I have a methyl oil group. What is methyl oil group? Methyl alcohol. Methyl alcohol when attached to phenol it is O methyl oil phenol. I have taken one O methyl oil phenol. And over here also I have another methyl oil phenol. But what I have done over here, I have taken CH2OH over here, OH over here. I am just taking an H on this side. 
Now what happens students now this H and this OH which I have kept in a dotted box they both of them combine together and form H2O. Now how did we get H2O it is 1H, 2H and O. So minus H2O. Always remember students condensation polymerization was clubbing of two monomers and removal of some byproduct. Over here the removal of the byproduct is nothing but my H2O. Small water molecules are being removed as byproduct and big monomers are being combined together. This exactly exactly defines my condensation polymerization so over here i have monomer 1 monomer 2 small byproduct that is my h2o is getting away how does it get away when we provide heat and some acidic ph now what is acidic ph we provide some kinds of acid to it they act as catalyst and we give some kind of energy that is the energy of heat so now this both of these will go out if this goes out or this goes away this forms a byproduct what will remain we'll have ch2 and we have this bond so now this CH2 will get attached to this bond. See, I have over here phenol, phenol, which is attached together by a CH2 group. Again, in the same way, phenol, phenol, which is attached to CH2 group. This CH2 group is what students, it is methyl. CH4 is methane. So what is CH2? This is methyl. So we will call it as methylene linkage. And this methylene linkage is known as Novolac. A second step was the formation of Novolac. From Novolac, we will form Bakelite in the third step. The linear polymer obtained as above is a thermoplastic and dissolves in few aromatic solvents, hence is generally converted into thermoset Bakelite. Always we want thermosets as compared to thermoplastics because thermosets are more rigid and it will not dissolve a lot. And that's the reason why even though Novolac is a good polymer and it is generally used in many other applications, but over here we will convert it into Bakelite. The product with ether linkage gives a polymer called as Resol and this is nothing but my Resol. Over here now we have studied two kinds of products one is Dissol the second is Novolac from Novolac we will make Bakelite but it is very important for us to also know what Resol is Resol is nothing but a polymer which is made by ether linkage ether linkage as I told you is ROR so let us look over here this is my one phenol with CH2 on this side and this is my another phenol with CH2 on this side of course we have other CH2s over this side and this side but as of now I am focusing on this why because I want to show you the ether linkage of R O R. Do not consider this as 1R, this as 1R and this as 1O. No, this is not R. This is a part of R. This entire structure is the R. Over here, this entire structure is an R. If you see this entire structure and this entire structure are matching, that means over here I have one benzene ring, over here I have one benzene ring. This benzene ring has an OH, over here also we have OH, this side CH2, this side CH2, this side CH2 with an O, this side CH2 with an O. These structures are exactly matching each other. So that is the reason why we call it simple ethers. This is one R, this is O, this is another R. If at all, by chance in some polymers, if the structures do not match, that means this structure does not match with the structure, which very rarely happens, we call that as mixed ether linkage. But as of now, this is my simple ether linkage. And this entire structure N times is my polymer, which is known as Resol. Let's move on to step number 3. Novolac is obtained in step 2 is simply heated at about 150 degrees Celsius using a catalyst whereby a highly crossed link polymer Bakelite is obtained. Let us have a look at the structure of Bakelite. Now students you all should understand that Novolac is not a monomer. Novolac itself is a polymer. It is joined together by methylene linkage. If you remember Novolac it was OH, OH and itself joined by a CH2. That means whenever I am making Bakelite, Bakelite is a polymer made from a polymer. Bakelite is a polymer which is made from Novolac. What is Novolac a polymer. What is Bakelite a polymer? So that is the reason why we had this three step process. The first step was first to make a polymer from a monomer. So we used monomers and made a polymer and named that polymer as Novolac. And then after that step what was it? To convert this polymer into another polymer which is much more stronger, has cross linkages and much more tough. And that's the reason why we have converted that polymer which is Novolac into another polymer, a stronger and a better polymer which is Bakelite. If you see students over here, the structure of Bakelite is comparatively similar to the structure of your Novolac. Novolac was nothing but this much. If you take one of this with one of this, this was my Novolac. 
over here i have one benzene ring another benzene ring with an oh group and both of them were joined by a methylene bond this methylene bond gets continued over here this methylene bond gets continued over here and so on but what happens in bakelite students this methylene bond is not only linear but also crossed linked what are crossed linked bonds if i have one linear structure over here what is linear structure monomers which are joined by some kind of bond is one linear structure i have another linear structure over here these are my linear structures but if i have a bond which connects both of these structures then because of this bond this is known as a cross linked bond and because of this both of these structures will become set at the positions they will not move around a lot because of the cross linked bonds and that is the reason why that polymer becomes a tough polymer and because of these cross linked structures these are my cross linked structures over here this ch2 ch2 and ch2 because of these structures these cross linked bonds the entire structure the structure of bakelite also becomes a cross linked polymer when you heat novolac for around 150 degrees celsius these bonds will remain as it is but there will be new bonds which will get developed and these are the new bonds and because of these new bonds that Novolac is now converted into Bakelite. Now we study the three steps to make Bakelite. Now why do we exactly make Bakelite? Let us study the properties of it and based on the properties let us study the uses of it as well. So let's move on to the properties of phenol form haldehyde resin. First is phenolic resins or bakelite is a rigid, hard and infusible solid. When I have rigid, hard and infusible, all three properties are extremely desirable. When I have something which is very rigid, I know it will not decompose or disintegrate very soon. If it is hard, I know the change of shape will not be possible. And infusible, what do we mean by infusible? Infusible is it has a very long shelf life. It does not perish very soon. Of course, all of these in long term become harmful because these are not biodegradable. But when it comes to utility, we will desire all such properties in any material. The second is they are scratch resistant, water resistant and insoluble solids. The third is they possess excellent electrical insulating character. Now electrical insulating character is very useful because it can be used in many places. If they are good insulators, they will not conduct electricity at all. They can also be used as insulators. They can also be used for making things which can help us or keep us safe from electrical shocks or any kind of electrical charge. Let's see the uses of these resins. First is for making electric insulating parts such as switches, plugs, switchboards, heater handles, etc. If you see your switch, the switch is made up of bakelite, which is a polymer. Now this switch will generally never disintegrate, will generally never perish. It is there for years and years altogether. Secondly, you never get generally shocks from switches because they are very good insulators. That means it has all good properties of an insulator. Plus it is hard and rigid. It's infusible. It won't perish. And that's the reason why it can be used for making many of the hard insulating materials the second is it is used for paints and varnishes it is used as a component of paints and varnishes paints and varnishes do not completely are made up of this bakelite resin but one of the components is bakelite and the last one is it's used as a grinder for grinding wheels so in today's session we studied what is phenol formaldehyde resin which is also known as bakelite we also studied the three important steps which lead into making of bakelite and why do we need to make Bakelite the properties of it as well as the uses of it? Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.